I'm John Chalice. I'm a professor of biology at Creighton University. I also am the director of the environmental science program. So this is the Creighton University coastal and estuarine ecology class and we've been on the road now for about a week and a half. We left Omaha on May 17th. Last week we worked in West Florida on Apalachicola and St. Joseph's Bays, uh, part of the NOAA Research Reserve System. Today we'll be out on the Florida Keys Marine Sanctuary, Luke Reef, and uh, this is an outdoor classroom. There's no better way to show students ecology than to take them out on a coral reef. There's more biodiversity uh, per acre there than just about any other habitat on the world, and uh, it's a very productive and important marine system, obviously critical to the uh, to the Keys as a, as a holistic ecosystem. This is if you would just keep your eyes open and watch for those guys. Don't try and catch them. They are poisonous. They will sting you. If you don't know what they look like, there's a sticker right here on the helm that you can take a look at one. While we're out at the reef, we're also going to do a few measurements today. We have a multi-sensor sonde, which will be dropped at each station to record data. It does it on its own. It will be recording salinity, pH, oxygen, depth, turbidity, and probably a few other things. We, we, we can simultaneously measure about 10 properties of water, and we'll do that at each of three dive sites. We'll also be taking plankton samples to look at the small critters in the water, but our main focus will be the, the bottom community and the reef system. The reef here is a, no more than uh, 30 feet deep. That would be our maximum depth. That gives us unlimited bottom time. We don't have to worry. It's a very safe place to dive with students. We don't have to worry about the uh, decompression charts because we never exceed them with these three dives. So three dives in the water, about three hours of water time altogether. Some of the most important work that we're doing is, is very simple. It's, it's simply photographic documentation of the habitats. We have uh, several underwater cameras. In fact, I think altogether five or six different devices. And we're able to uh, very easily and readily, by, by picking the right uh, conditions, take uh, photographic assessments of the conditions of these different marine communities we're studying. Uh, they're also learning techniques in water chemistry and water sampling that uh, are useful for uh, the overall research objectives of our center. And uh, then uh, next week when we get them into the marshes up to their knees in mud, uh, that will be another uh, very useful part of this process. I am seeing new regenerating corals, especially the Montastria annularis, that star coral. It sort of grows, it's a greenish brown cover and it, it, it is coming back here. That stuff was bleached heavily in some uh, events in the 90s and early 2000s. And uh, at least that's, that is good to see some, some regenerating coral here. Uh, who knows what lies ahead, but uh, you know, of all the, uh, of the, all the areas down here, this is one of the healthiest reefs. Fish, some really big rainbows. I think the best thing I saw was that school of young midnight yeah, parrotfish. Those parrots. I've never seen a school of midnight that, parrotfish. That large, like that. Yeah. That's there were some really huge uh, parrotfish and, uh, oh, I got a sweet, big old school of parrotfish. Yeah. I, I would say I saw a blue one, a couple parrotfish that were at least a meter in length. Anybody seen a grouper? Huh? Bass a black grouper? No. Ever see these harlequin bass? They're, they're down on the sand often. Uh, little stranded bass. School's a blue tang today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, John Ollie, and he is now uh, a certified diver. He's joined the, the ranks of the diving community. Woohoo! And Danielle has just received paperwork making her a dive instructor, which is a pretty significant achievement for a student of her age and uh, means good things ahead for her. So, a few really big green moray eels. We saw two foul fish. I saw some big gray angelfish. Some queen angelfish. Yeah, I got some big barracuda. Me and Carla swam next to a huge tarpon. This is probably the biggest tarpon we've seen since we've been here. So, this was a really good second dive. We saw some uh, nicely regenerating mountain star coral, a species that's really important to this reef. It's taking quite a hit from bleaching and diseases, but um, showing some evidence of, of coming back nicely. Also saw some uh, Elkhorn coral. This is now a federally endangered species. There's a lot of uh, effort to uh, try and bring this coral species back. And uh, in a couple places here on Luke Key, it's doing very well. 
It's not back to anything like it was 20, 30 years ago, but uh, at least there's some nice growth, and uh, we got some good photo documentation of that. There's some turf algae uh, that, that overgrows and is considered bowed algae, but not a lot. I think the, there's enough herbivorous fish on this reef to, to keep it pretty clean and down. Dive number three. Last dive. Got to make this a good one. Maybe another year before I'm back in the Keys to dive with the class. So, got to make this one count. We'll see you topside. Had a shark swim pretty close next to me. Oh, 10 feet away. <laughs> that scared me pretty good. So, favorite fish of the day? What was your favorite fish? Your shark? Black tip, no doubt. Black tip. He's going to be at dinner later on. Who saw the mori? Yeah, oh, yeah. I saw yeah. Wow, yeah. that's great. Green or others? Green. Green, green. green. Uh -huh. green or huge? It was like yellow. Spots. Okay. So what we're doing is we're filtering the water that we collected this morning from the reef um, and we're filtering out the, chlor the chlorophyll and chlorophyll is an indicator of phytoplankton and it's a common test to see if phytoplankton levels um, are reflected by the chlorophyll levels. And this is a YSI multi-instrument sond. In shorthand it takes a lot of different uh, parameters. Secchi transparency, um, chlorophyll A content, CDOM, nitrate, temperature, uh, conductivity, salinity, dissolved oxygen, pH, turbidity, all that good stuff. So you oh cool. You follow oh. follow the canal all the way yep. around. Yep. You'll see these markers here. Yeah, we know those. Green nans, yep. Where we, and there's, instead of going this way, you just make the right and follow yeah. Instead of going all around here, go up this channel. You go under the bridge, and when right, you go under the bridge. We did yesterday morning, right? When you go under the bridge, watch this shoal get over here to this side. So there's been a lot of attempts to protect coastal wetlands uh, both in the U.S. and, and internationally and it, it is really important. We've lost a lot of uh, really good habitat for fisheries and for shoreline protection. When mangroves are, are lost, uh, that is a, a loss for the whole coastal system. Miami and Miami Beach used to be primarily a, a mangrove swamp and that was all cleared to make that marvelous metropolitan area but uh, at a loss of natural systems. Fortunately, Florida still has a substantial amount of mangrove, and now they're well protected. Okay, we're out here off Summerlin Key between Summerlin and Big Torch in the Lower Keys. And this is a classic example of a small key or mangrove island. Mangroves are tropical vegetation. We think they started as freshwater river riparian plants in the tropics and gradually acquired, in a few cases, tolerance to full seawater salinity. One of the tricks, although here it's going to be a lot simpler, is when you, you get in close, kind of flutter kick and just be gentle and you'll see a lot more. You don't want to stir up the bottom sediment. The root systems that are exposed to the water are a fantastic amount of surface area, substrate, for growth. And so when we're snorkeling in there, take a look at what's growing on the roots. But you're going to see invertebrates like sponges, possibly some oysters, they're called coon oysters. Uh, you may see feather duster worms. The reefs provide a protective filtering buffer from the, the big open ocean conditions. Uh, back here it's a lot more sheltered and protected. But here's the nursery area for a lot of fish and invertebrates that live out on the reef. And uh, it's a really interesting and interconnected complex. And for the whole system to work, every part of it has to be healthy. Our original plan was to have our student class on uh, the Grand Bay Reserve last week helping with a, a large-scale survey. That was work planned eight months ago and uh, we were informed about two weeks before that period that uh, the work was canceled, that uh, it was not possible to have outside investigators on the site. Uh, the, the research staff there were too preoccupied with preparations for the spill. So it was a disappointment for certain, uh, we, especially in that we were successful in getting the aerial imagery. Uh, however, we do expect to be able to return at points this summer and put students on the ground. And uh, I actually have several students in this course who have expressed interest in being part of that crew should, uh, should the opportunity prevail. But it's a found opportunity too. Uh, you have to be resourceful in field research. Any, any scientist can tell you that because conditions don't always cooperate. And so we, uh, we rearranged our itinerary. We spent longer than we had planned working at Apalachicola Bay near. And, and got excellent data there. So I feel good about that. I think we were able to help the uh, baseline data effort there. And uh, the plan all along was to come to the Keys because uh, 
Not only is this a research uh, methods course, but we're also teaching the students about coastal ecology. And what better place to bring students to learn about coastal ecology than the reefs, sea grasses, and mangroves of South Florida. And uh, next week we're going to introduce another change. We're going to Sapelo Island near on the Georgia coast, known for its estuarine work in salt marsh ecology. And uh, we're going to be concentrated on uh, the habitats in a, in a different place, a different regime there.